Welcome to our mini lesson on factorials and permutations. We're going to be looking at these two things. First off, what's a factorial? A factorial is a represented, first off, using the symbol, the exclamation point. So the factorial of 6 is written as 6 with an exclamation point afterwards. And what it means is 6 times every other smaller number whole number, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that is greater than 0. Or if you don't multiply it times 0, because that just wouldn't make any sense. So in this case, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 720. So the factorial of 6 is equal to 720. Let's work with them just a little bit here. When you have the numbers inside of parentheses, like 3 plus 4, the factorial symbol on the outside, you would first add the two numbers inside, 3 and 4 is 7, and then solve. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 5,040. When you have them like this, 5 and 2, you would actually solve each factorial and then add them together, because we do multiplication before we do addition in the order of operations, and it's the same thing. Factorial of 5 is 120, and 2 is 2. When we have them in a fraction form, we can write them out. The factorial of 5, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and 3 is 3 times 2 times 1. And then we would cancel out any like terms. So in this case, we'd cancel out the 3, 2, 1 on both the top and bottom. And we would just have 5 times 4, which is equal to. 20. Well, it is in my class anyway. I don't know if you have another teacher that does something different and 5 times 4 gives you some other number than... The anyway, in my class it's 20, so we're going to stick with that. All right, now we can use that information to actually... Oh, one more thing. Back up a step. For some reason, although it doesn't make much sense, the factorial of 0 is 1. All right, that's just something that is out there. All right, back to our lesson. Now we're going to look at permutations. They are arrangements when the order matters. For example, if I have three marbles, and I want to see how many different patterns I can make using those marbles, this would be something where I would need to use permutations. And I'll show you how that works. For the first spot, I would have three options. All right, I would have one, two, three marbles, and I want to put the first one in the... I can put any of those three into our first position. Then, when I, after I've placed the first marble, I only have two marbles left, so I have two options for the second place. And when I go on to the third spot, I've already placed two marbles, so I have only one option for the third place. In other words, you would say, to find how many different patterns, you would say three because that's how many options you have at first, then you have only two options, and then you have only one option. So 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6. And this may look familiar, because it is also a factorial of 3. All right. Now here's our formula for our permutations. For the permutation P, n would be the number of items, like in the case of that last example, n would be 3, 3 marbles. r is how many items are taken or counted at a time. So in this case, r would have been, in the example of the marbles, r would be 3, because we took all 3 items. Does that make sense? So they're all counted at, that, at the end. Let's look at this and do an actual sample question. I think that this will help. If I have five baseballs, and I want to hit them into a field, how many different ways can I choose the balls that I want to hit? So in other words, if it mattered what order I was hitting these baseballs, how many, I would pick one up and crank it into the field, pick the second one up and crank it into the field, how many different orders overall could I choose? So in this case, I'd be asking a question, and I would use my equation here. We have five items, and all five will be taken, so therefore n is 5, 
and all 5 will be taken, so r will also equal 5, and my equation will look like this. n is equal to 5. In both places I see n, I will substitute the value of 5, and in where I see r, I will substitute the value of 5. I should have put 5 in here and here as well. We'll do that in the next question. So to solve, I would do 5 minus 5 is 0, and remember that this actually equals 1, so we're going to have a fraction of whatever that is equal to over 1. And 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 120. So in this case, there are 120 different ways, different orders, that I can hit these balls out into the field. Usually you'll get a question like this where it asks you like putting things on a shelf in a certain order, things that actually matter, as opposed to hitting baseballs out into a field, which really doesn't matter. Then you may also be asked a question like this. Find the value of 10, 4, 10 p 4. And in that case, we just use our formula, our equation, and we substitute in the value of 10 where you see n and 4 where you see r like I've done here. So then the factorial of 10, and then we'll do the factorial of 10 minus 4, which is actually the factorial of 6. 10 minus 4 is 6. So I would have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the bottom. I can cancel out everything that's the same on the top and the bottom. So all of this 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and solve for my final answer of 5,040. That's how I would do this type of question. I hope that this lesson has been helpful. I know that there was a lot of information in a little bit of time. If you've got more questions, make sure to ask your regular teacher and have a wonderful day.